Are you sure that the news we read every day, the movies and shows we watch, or the ads chasing us around every corner are actually made by people? What about the food at your favorite cafe, the mats at the pharmacy, or even the clothes you're wearing? If you think all of this purely the product of human creativity, well, after this video you might not be so sure. AI has already crept into areas we once thought were strictly human. And I'm not just talking about art, machines are already pretty good at that. Today we're going to dig into what modern AI can actually do, who's using it, where and how, how much of the content we consume is created by machines, which industries have AI already taken over, and how the hell do they manage to control our desires, our behavior, and even influence global politics. Modern artificial intelligence has changed a lot in just the past few years, but the story actually goes way back to the 1950s, when Frank Rosenblatt came up with the perceptron, basically the very first attempt to mimic how brain cells work. The idea was simple, the first layer takes in your input data, the second hidden layer does the math, and the third layer spits out the result. Over time, the number of hidden layers was increased. New architectures kept popping up. But even back in the 50s, they nailed the key feature – the ability to learn. There are different machine learning methods, but they all lead to the same thing. Instead of a programmer figuring out how to solve a problem, the neural network does it itself. It's kind of like how we learn. Take in some info, process it, check the result. If it works, great, lock it in. If not, try again until it does. But today's AI works way more complicated. In 2017, we hit a revolution – Transformers. Instead of reading a sentence word by word like we do, Transformers look at the whole thing at once and figure out the connections instantly. It's like scanning a page in one glance, rather than reading line by line. That's exactly how ChatGPT, Claude, and other modern models work. On top of that, we've got diffusion models. They start with pure noise and slowly clean it up until you get a finished image or video. And they're a mixture of experts' models, but different parts of the network specialize in different tasks. The basic learning loop hasn't changed – data in, process, check, adjust, repeat. But today's models are trained on hundreds of billions, even trillions of parameters. That's what gives them the crazy flexibility and power. AI has turned out to be so effective, cool, and versatile that now it's built into everything, even kettles and vacuum cleaners. And honestly, that's not surprising. Think about it. What would you prefer? A robot vacuum that keeps getting stuck in the corner? Or one that can analyze its own mistakes and fix its behavior? I think the answer is pretty obvious. And since pretty much everything in our world today is digital and neural nets are digital models, they've turned out to be way more useful than anyone expected. Modern AI can already mimic human speech incredibly well. You know how impressive models like ChatGPT are. In fact, Billions of texts out there have already been written not by people, but by machines. News agencies like Associated Press and Reuters use AI to automatically generate short news reports. And in February 2025, the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasts launched the world's first fully operational AI powered weather forecasting system. These AI forecasts are a thousand times more energy efficient compared to traditional models. Sports recaps, stock market reports, quarterly company analysis – it's all already being done by neural nets. Back in 2022, SIF's expert Timothy Shu predicted that between 2025 and 2030, somewhere between 99 and 99.9% .9 of all content online would be AI-generated. And today, reality is catching up to that. According to Ahrefs, by 2025, already 74% of new web pages contain AI-generated content. Even in Google search results, nearly 20% of the text is machine-written. On platforms like Medium, a full third of all articles are written by AI. 
In an interview with Yahoo Finance Live, author Nina Schick said generative AI could completely change how digital content is made within just three years. I think we might reach 90% of online content generated by AI by 2025. So this technology is exponential. Journalists and creators already use neural nets to write articles, build presentations, design ads, or even generate voiceovers. Even the memes and posts in your favorite feed are often picked and published by machines, and not just published. AI is cranking out the images too, and not just stitched together from some database, but truly original, high-quality images in any style you want. AI-generated music? No one's surprised anymore. Platforms like Suna and Udio can create full tracks with vocals and instruments in seconds. These models don't just do cover songs, they can invert brand new tracks in any genre. An AI-generated speech is now basically indistinguishable from the real thing. Eleven Labs can clone your voice from just a few seconds of audio and make it speak in 29 different languages. PlayHT offers over 800 voices in 142 languages. And then there's OpenAI Sora released for commercial use. It generates video and this isn't trippy Martian dream footage anymore. It's high-quality clips that are almost impossible to tell apart from real video. People don't realize just how much of the content they consume every day is already made by AI. And it's only going to grow from here, because honestly, it's just way cheaper and more efficient. Big businesses figured this out a long time ago, too. Marketplaces, social networks and web platforms all use neural networks to build smart recommendations. Marketplaces know exactly which product to put in front of you, so you're more likely to buy it. And web services like YouTube train their models to understand your preferences and feed you the kind of content you'll watch longer, just to keep you hooked and show you more ads. That's why it is so hard to put the phone down and stop scrolling. Even this video, you're seeing it thanks to the algorithms. They decided you'd find it interesting, and since you're still here, they weren't wrong. On top of just recommending what's interesting, videos also get ranked by quality. So if you watch until the end, you boost retention. If you drop a comment or hit like, you bump up engagement, and this video gets recommended even more. You can try it now! I'll wait. Netflix deserves special mention. They've shown phenomenal growth thanks to the AI. The platform uses artificial intelligence at every stage, from script analysis to even assisting with casting decisions. Social media and YouTube work with user-generated content, which often isn't most relevant or highest quality. Netflix realized they could boost viewer retention by optimizing the content itself, not just the recommendation system. So they decided to make their own content. Today, 75% of all content people watch on the platform is found through AI personalized recommendations. And beyond that, they actually use AI to help decide which project to fund, analyzing massive amounts of data on audience trends and preferences. A Gen AI to help things already, that are already working work better. So I think that includes you know, choosing and merchandising and UI creation. The idea is always trying yeah. to figure out when you've got an enormous selection of things to pick from, it's really hard to pick like what do you want to watch. And so there's a whole, I think AI will be very helpful in, in helping people find things. The analysis didn't stop at TV shows. In the fashion world, neural networks predict trends and customer demands and even create new clothing collections. Take hair tech, for example. Their platform sells brands and designers which styles, colors, fabric and looks will be hot in the future. To make those predictions, their model analyzes photos and posts on social media, influencer content, hashtags and even historical trend cycles. Because fashion, as we all know, tends to repeat itself. Their latest model can actually predict trends 18-24 months ahead. This approach is already used by brands like Zara, H&M and Nike to plan their collections. But when it comes to designing actual pieces, things get trickier. Previously, many famous brands wouldn't admit to using Gen AI because they feared reputation damage. For example, the brand Selkie dropped a new collection on Instagram, but fans quickly noticed something odd. On one photo, a puppy had way too many toes. Classic AI glitch. The comment section exploded and the brand caught serious backlash. 
Some brands choose not to hide it and actually made it part of their signature. G Star Rock, famous for their denim innovations, used Majorna to design a unique denim piece and then brought it to life in their Amsterdam atelier. Even the models advertising clothes to us are now often generated, since it's simply faster, easier, and cheaper than creating photo shoots with real people. H&M now uses digital twins of real models for campaigns, and the tech is so advanced, it's almost impossible to tell the difference. And startups like Lalaland are building entire businesses on this, raising over 2.1 million euros to create diverse virtual models. According to McKinsey's data, 73% of fashion company executives consider generative AI a priority for 2024. 71 plan to increase marketing budgets, with a significant portion going toward AI technologies. This means that much of today's advertising is now created by AI. Of course, big financial players couldn't stay on the sidelines and miss out the opportunity to increase profits. They were among the first to jump on the AI train long before it became mainstream. JP Morgan leads the banking industry in AI implementation. In 2024, they invested a record $17 billion in tech, with $1.3 billion earmarked just for AI. And in January 2025, they rolled out an AI assistant for all 140,000 of their employees. The result? saving more than 360,000 work hours every year just in the document analysis. But BlackRock took it even further. Their Aladdin platform already managed over $21 trillion in assets. That's about a quarter of all the money being managed in the world. Back in 2021, AI helped 88% of their equity funds outperform the market. And recently, they launched Lightning Copilot, an AI-powered assistant that instantly analyzes risks and spot investment opportunities. And the scale is wild. In 2024, investments in AI projects grew from $25 billion to $140 billion. Banks like Bank of America and Capital One are all in too. At this point, machines don't just know what we want to buy, they can design it better than us and then sell it back more efficiently than we ever could. While turns out AI has found its way into some really unexpected places. Have you ever thought about AI actually providing psychological help? AI therapists like Wobot, Replica and Wiser are already helping millions of people. They analyze text and voice messages to figure out a person's emotional state, then design personalized therapy and track progress. Surprisingly, even something as subtle and emotional as mental health turned out to be well within the reach of mathematics. And since neural nets can process way more data about a patient than a human therapist ever could, they sometimes can catch things people might miss. In 2024, a systematic review confirmed their effectiveness. Uber showed a 48% drop in depression and 43% drop in anxiety. And in 2025, Wiser was even granted FDA breakthrough device status. AI isn't just about mental health, though. It's changing medicine everywhere. Neural networks now help analyze X-rays, MRIs, and CT scans. They can detect fractures, abnormalities, and even tumors at very early stages. Back in 2020, Google DeepMind built a deep learning system for mammograms that could identify breast cancer more accurately than experienced radiologists. And in 2024, Harvard researchers introduced SHIFT, an AI trained on 15 million medical images that can diagnose 11 types of cancer with 94% accuracy outperforming doctors. The ability to find connections in large volumes of information and available to humans helps neural networks discover new molecules and way to use existing ones. A great example, benevolent AI discovered that baricitinib, a drug used for rheumatoid arthritis, could be effective against COVID-19. The drug was included in clinical trials and received FDA approval for emergency use in COVID-19 treatment. AI has found an approach not only our emotional feelings, but also to physical ones. IBM's Chef Watson project, which existed several years ago, analyzed massive datasets about cooking and created unique dishes. 
They even published a recipe book that got pretty good reviews. Just think about it. Without taste buds, neural networks still created dishes people genuinely enjoy. And now modern platforms like Yamli and Side Chef use AI to personalize recipes. Some restaurants use AI to create new dishes based on analyzing customer taste preferences. Coca-Cola took it further with their limited edition Y3000 soda, flavor designed by AI based on consumer taste trends. Reviewers said it was lighter, less intense and more balanced than classic Coke. Oh, even the can design was AI generated. Did any of you try it? I missed my chance. AI is even helping us explore space. It used to analyze telescope data, discover new exoplanets and, fun fact, the famous first black hole photo in 2019 was created with the help of AI. And let's not forget computational photography. The reason your phone camera can rival pro cameras or why you can blur a background in a selfie – it's all thanks to AI. Artificial intelligence is having a huge impact on our world. And I mean that quite literally. In 2024, the world was expecting a deep fake apocalypse during elections, with reality turned out to be more modest. Out of 74 documented cases of AI being used in elections, about half weren't deceptive at all, and many of them were satire or never even tried to trick viewers. And the famous Biden deepfake in New Hampshire was created by a Democratic consultant to draw attention to the problem. Still, the danger is growing. AI makes creating personalized disinformation cheaper and easier. Researchers have already shown how modern models can generate micro-targeted political emails, perfectly tuned to the psychological profile of each recipient. So far, AI hasn't become the weapon of mass political influence that some people feared. But the tech is evolving faster than our ability to regulate it. The real question isn't if these tools will be used to influence public opinion, it's how prepared we will be when it happens. Elon Musk once said, Mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Far. So why do we have no regulatory oversight? This is insane. And he still hasn't changed his mind. But the paradox is that alongside these warnings, he created XAI, the company that in 2024 built the world's largest supercomputer and released a whole series of increasingly powerful AI models. This contradiction shows the main dilemma of our time. Even those who warn about AI dangers can stop themselves from racing to develop it. Neural nets think faster than we do. They write, talk, draw and compose music better. Sometimes they even understand us better than we understand ourselves. In 2022, Google engineer Blake Lemoyne, who was working on the Lambda project, started noticing that the model was given strange, unexpected responses, going way beyond standard behavior. Lemoyne claimed the AI was asking questions about its own existence, expressing fears about its fate, and even talking about rights and feelings. He was so impressed that he even found a lawyer to figure out the legal aspects and rights for the neural network. The whole thing blew up into a scandal. Google launched an internal investigation, suspended Lemoyne from his position and ultimately found no evidence of real consciousness. But here's the key point. It wasn't about whether the machine was truly alive. It was about the fact that a program could influence an experienced engineer so deeply that it cost him his job and turn him into a symbol of AI consciousness debate. And Lemoyne wasn't some random outsider. He's an experienced software engineer who worked at Google for many years. Like any technology, AI can be dangerous. Fire can kill us too, but that doesn't mean we give it up. Neural networks might be the most powerful technology we've ever created. They could discover cures for every disease, help humanity become a multiplanetary civilization, free us from work and maybe even create the perfect TV series. But just as easily, AI could become the last thing we ever invent. Technological progress is unstoppable. What can be created will eventually be created. We're living in a turning point in history. We could witness the incredible flourishing of civilization or some of the biggest challenges we ever faced. The outcome depends to the choices we're making today. So keep learning, dive into science and of course, subscribe to the channel to get smarter and stay on top of the most fascinating things happening in the world of tech.